So something has just arrived at the door and it's probably the most excited I've ever been for a delivery. In that box is probably the rarest and most expensive whiskey I'll ever have in my entire life. So like a lot of whiskey enthusiasts, when I was first getting into whiskey, I always wondered which whiskey was the rarest. And that led me onto a quest to find which distillery produced the most elusive whiskey. Vintage whiskies can cost thousands of pounds. Holy grail of whiskey. History and bottled history. But one of the world's rarest whiskies. Jaw dropping. A collector's item. But there's a lot of marketing to sift through. So this is part of the reason why finding rare whiskies can actually be so confusing because so many distilleries out there and so many brands can just claim that they're rare on the bottle. Like this one here, a bottom shelf whiskey called the JMB Rare that you can find in most bottle stores, most bars. So JMB Rare is not actually that rare. But what we want to find is actual rare whiskey. So I hunted, I researched and I asked some other whiskey enthusiasts, people who are in the know about rare whiskey. Some of these whiskey the distilleries have closed, like Brewer, Port Allen, Rosebank, and Port Dundas. And that's what I love about old and rare bottles. It gives you the opportunity to taste and go back in time that is completely impossible to do under normal conditions. So closed distilleries, what are they and what makes them so special? Basically, they're distilleries, they're no longer producing whiskey. And this can happen for all sorts of reasons, like economic factors, consolidation, and changing consumer preferences. And over time, these factors can lead to many famous distilleries to close their doors forever. Now, a lot of this happened in the 1980s, where there was a massive crash, but there are some distilleries that even closed before that, before the big crash, like the super rare and elusive Ladybird, which was only operational for nine years and it closed in 1975. And I don't even know anyone who's tried some before. I even looked it up on YouTube. I think there's probably one guy who had like a sample and that was it. And its short life adds to the allure. It means that it's one of the rarest distilleries that you could ever try. And that's what's so crazy. There will only ever be a finite amount of the liquid produced by them in the world, becoming rarer and rarer as people slowly buy and drink the last of it. And that's why they're so sought after by collectors and enthusiasts. They offer a rare and unique glimpse into a bygone era of whiskey making. And some of these most famous distilleries, they're whiskies that can sell for thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. Oh man, I just really want to try it. What are they like? So, so apart from Capadonic, which is a relatively new closed whiskey, look man, so every closed distillery nowadays is really so hard to find. The reason for that is because a lot of people don't drink them. A lot of people invest and they buy it and they keep it and try to f um, flip it later. And our club is all about drinking it right now. So that's Henwood. And out of anyone I know, Henwood is the person to find those rare, weird, super interesting whiskies here in New Zealand. He runs a YouTube channel called Eat, Smoke, Drink, where he reviews a lot of these super rare whiskies. And he also runs a whiskey club. If you're in Auckland, make sure you go along to that club. But I thought he's definitely the person I need to ask, can I try one of these rare closed distilleries that people are talking about? So Henwood, you're the guy out of anyone in New Zealand that I think if I get my hands on one of these closed distilleries, one of these rare whiskies like a Rose Bank or a Bora or a Port Allen, you're gonna be the guy. Yeah, look, I'll be honest, um, those are some pretty rare stuff you've you've named there. Like that's, yeah, pretty, pretty unicorn stuff. Um, it's gonna be hard to find. It's gonna be super expensive. Look, let me, let me talk to our club and the guys and see if we have any in our cellar or someone has something in their cellar and I'll get back to you. What do you say? Okay, great. I'll, I'll be crossing my fingers, but yeah, no, I'm not sure if it's going to happen either. Okay, yeah. cool. It definitely was a long shot and it seemed pretty unlikely that I'll be able to try any of these types of whiskies in New Zealand. Can we just say that again? 
Hey Phil, you're in luck. Yeah. Um, I managed to find a rare bottling of a rose bank. Oh. Um, pretty bloody exciting. Rosebank is a lowland distillery made to provide a triple distilled style to Irish immigrants living in Scotland at the time. But it really is a style of yesteryear. Sadly, due to economics and a changing world, Rosebank's doors closed in 1993. A gem lost to time. But look, that's not the only thing that I've got for you. Yeah. I managed to find the last bit of the Lady Burn oh. What? The Lady Burn. So a lot of uh, independent bottlings who do have the very small amounts of whiskey from this distillery call it the Ayrshire, which is the region that it's from. There's almost none of it left in the world and it's very different to anything that is made now. So something has just arrived at the door and it's probably the most excited I've ever been for a delivery. Crazy. It's older than me. And this one. Unreal, eh? Crazy. So the Rose Bank, the reason why I sent that is because it is probably one of the most sought after, most famous closed distilleries. It's now netting ridiculous prices because it's Rose Bank. But they've reopened the distillery recently. Can you ever make the same whiskey? The different people, different time, different methods, like... I don't think you can. I don't think yeah. you can, you're right. That's You're on the money. Yeah. These whiskeys, yeah. when it was distilled, it wasn't a scientific. There was mm. a, probably a lot of instinct, a lot of off the cuff processes that they did that they went, you know, okay, let's just do it. And we're gonna get through this batch today. It's, it's not as technically driven. It's not as um, accounting and profit driven as it is today. So it's never going to be fully the same. The individuals that made it, they are, yeah, they're, they're no longer around and you'll never replicate it with today's systems. <laughs> so crazy to try these whiskeys. Mm. That's so interesting. It has this kind of like fruity notes, this malty note, and like this sort of biscuity note. It does remind me of um, Irish whiskey a little bit. And I guess that's the triple distilled part. Oh wow, it's still going. I just can't get over the finish. For something that's bottled at 40%, You'd think it was 55%, like the way yeah. this finish is going. You know, some whiskeys, sherry bombs, smoke bombs, they're like a solo guitar or a solo drum. This is different. It's quiet. It's not loud, but it's wide, like an orchestra. There's just a lot going on. All those things are doing lots at the same time. Look at that. And the rear Ashire just first up on the nose. Whoa, holy, what the? It's almost like a Play-Doh or something, a Pyre, and almost like a Milo. Well, I can't get over that nose, it's so crazy. I don't think I've, I've never had a whiskey like this. This Lady Burn Rare Ayrshire, I just found it to be just, yeah, completely like a bouquet of random things. It's like, yeah. it's like a two-year-old giving you a basket of random things they picked up in the house in the garden. What you're tasting there is you've gone down mm. the rabbit hole and inside the rabbit hole is another rabbit hole. They were only operational for about nine years. That's and crazy. for some. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Nine years and they, they're gone. They didn't mothball the, the distillery. They destroyed it. It's closed. It's gone. It's demolished. It's like, the stills aren't there. There's something about trying a whiskey like this. It's almost like time travel in a bottle. You know, like you, you've got this time capsule and you're literally going back to that era, that time, to see how they distilled and what they presumably liked. I, I don't know if anyone liked it. I mean, it's, I'm a bit mixed on it myself. It's a little bit weird. Probably won't be the best whiskey you've ever tried, but yeah. it will be one of the rarest, if not the rarest whiskey you've ever tried. But it shows you there's just so much more about whiskey than just the smell and taste. There is the people you're drinking the whiskey with. There is the history, who made it, the hands that made it, when they made it, the story behind it. Now with every glass, it's one less dram of that distillery and you know and it's it's all up here now it's on your memory now right it's literally a piece of history that will never ever be there again